Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles Sabansi. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show. We cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment. And we give you guys a fresh perspective on things. And I always say, I mean, today we got a hell of a show uh, in store for you guys. Before we get into it, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, we have our Dreamers Pro podcast. If you want to if you want our full shows before they come out on YouTube, be sure to follow our podcast. We have that pinned in the comments below. Let me get into this topic uh, here. <clears throat> So as you guys know, there's this there's some storylines surrounding the Lakers, and the major storylines storyline, excuse me, are the following: Who are they going to hire as a head coach? All of us are speculating that the person is going to be JJ Redick. And the second storyline is: Are they going to draft Bronny James? Right, and we all know that's anchored uh, in LeBron's desire to play with his son for at least one year of his NBA career. That's one of his dreams. Nothing wrong with that. So these have been the two storylines, uh, and people have been discussing it. <clears throat> Ad nauseum, uh, it seems. So what happened? Yesterday, I tuned in to a clip of uh, ESPN First Take where they were discussing, you know, Bronny James and the Lakers and all of that. And then it got to a point where Stephen A. Smith began to point out something that had never occurred to me. And the reason it never occurred to me was because I wasn't paying close enough attention. But apparently, Bronny, I think, had jumped his draft stock or whatever, had moved to the 55th position or the 54th position. And as it turns out, the team with the 55th, I think 54th pick, are the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, what was disturbing about what Stephen A. Smith was saying was that Essentially, someone is manipulating the draft in order for the Lakers, or yeah, in order for rather Bronny James to be selected by the Lakers at the exact pick that they have, which I think is the 55th or 54th pick. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, wait, how is this even possible? How could LeBron, how could Clutch Sports, how could the NBA, how could they do all of this, right? Because where he lands in the draft, how how do they have control over that? And how is it happening that it's coincidentally that he's the number, he, 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 his, his, uh, his draft number lands directly at the spot that the Lakers have a pick, I think it's as the 55th pick. And I'm sitting there listening to him. I'm like, wait a minute, are they manipulating the draft? And as I'm listening to Stephen A. Smith, it seems to it seemed to me that that was what he was implying. And I'm like, wait, what? So this is taking place. It has gotten to this extent that they would do this in order just to get Bronny on the Lakers. So I was actually floored uh, listening to him say this. So these are the comments that we really want to hone in on. Uh, today, but before we even get into what Stephen A. Smith had to say, this video is brought to you by our sponsor, Game Time. Game Time makes getting NBA Finals tickets even faster and easier than ever before. For example, I am super excited about the games between the Dallas Mavericks and the Boston Celtics in the NBA Finals. With Game Time tickets, I can easily pick the best tickets for me. I love that I can choose between different deals. I have the option to select the cheaper deal, the best option deal, or my favorite. The Flash Deal. The Flash Deal gives me the option to find discounts that I can only find on game time. Once I select the ticket I want, I can see view my seat. And it's not just restricted to the NBA. I can also look for the best ticket deals for other sports like football, baseball, or concerts, or comedy, or theater shows. Included in my purchase, I also have a 24-hour return guarantee, a lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection so take the guesswork out of buying nba tickets with game time download the game time app create an account and use code clns for 20 dollars off your first purchase again create an account and redeem code clns for 20 dollars off and remember whenever you support this sponsor you're supporting this channel thank you so what we want to do now is we want to play exactly what stephen a smith had to say on ESPN first take yesterday after he basically said that these guys are manipulating the NBA draft for Bronny James. Uh, and then want to come back and react to his comments. Take a listen to Stephen A. Smith here. 
quick take essay. This one's for you. So Bronny James is remaining in the draft. His agent Rich Paul telling ESPN the number 54 prospect in the ESPN 100 has had a strong pre-draft process. Keep in mind the Lakers have the 17th and the 55th pick. Stephen A. Thoughts on Bronny staying in the draft? Well, first of all, um, I understand it from the standpoint that, you know what, he could always go back to college or what have you. I mean, that's allowed in this day and age. So that's something that Rich Paul made clear months ago. Um, so his options are still his options, and I don't blame him for exploring it to the max. All I'm saying is that what, what, what we have to be careful about, what I would implore LeBron James to be careful about, is that so much of, of, of what's transpiring seems so transparent, it's insulting. You have a situation where Bronny James get, uh, is projected as the as ranked 98th on, on, on the talent pool. He goes to the NBA uh, Combine, Molly, mm -hmm. and it drops 44 slots to 54. And the Lakers have the 55th pick in the second round. <laughs> I mean, but really, it's like, really? Yeah, you know, that must you be? I mean, Molly, he didn't drop 38 slots. You understand, like, like the 58 yeah. or something. He, uh, 60, right? He didn't drop 50 slots to, to, to you know, the you know, 48 or something. Oh, no. Right around the number where the Lakers <laughs> get the pick. Yeah. In other words, so if we pick them, it's justified because, look, they had a rank 54. I think we had the 55th pick. I mean, come on, man. You know, you just you just sit up there and you, you watch these folks, and it's like, just like I said before, just to reiterate my point, you could have started the podcast with J.J. in the playoffs or the offseason after the Lakers moved on from Darvin Ham. Oh, no. You're going to start the podcast on basketball, mind the game, while Darvin Ham is on the hot seat, talking schematics, talks and X's and O's and all of this other stuff. Then Darvin Ham gets fired. And then after that, J.J. Redick emerges as a top candidate for the job, even though that's not etched in stone. And LeBron wants, wants us to say, had nothing to do with it. As I said on the air the other day, I guess one plus one really does equal four. I mean, you, you, we, we, I mean, it's just new math. You just you can't make this stuff up. At some point in time, it's like too much looks too damn obvious. And so I look at Bronny James and I'm like, man, I'm rooting for this kid. Great kid. Wish him nothing but the best. Wonderful family. Wonderful kid. All of that other stuff. But when stuff like this happens. Yeah. It just invites cynicism and skepticism. So you heard what Stephen A. Smith uh, had to say. <sighs> you know what? I, I don't know why every now and then I just end up feeling like this naive NBA fan. I, like you really think like, okay, you kind of know what's going on. And then something like this happens and you realize you don't have a clue of what's really going on behind closed doors we understand that lebron had his has a desire to play for play with his son we understand that we also understand that the son has a desire to play in the nba what i didn't know was that these guys were actually working behind the scenes to now ensure that the son ends up on the Lakers to playing uh, uh, to play for his dad. Now, what are the issues here? First of all, they're manipulating the draft because I don't know how that's possible or it's rather coincidental. That's a major coincidence. Coincidence, given the fact that Bronny didn't have a stellar college uh, uh, NBA, uh, college career, basketball career. You have that aspect of it. You have the other aspect of how are the Lakers and clutch portion of these guys actually doing this? Because they have to be two parties working together. There has to be the NBA and the Lakers. And how will they manipulate? And if that's the if that's the case, how do we know that any other player that lands at any other spot deserves to be at that spot? How do we know? How exactly do we know? Number three, you know, the Lakers drafting Bronny, I don't know what that says about the Lakers as an organization. If we're being honest, if you look at what transpired with the Lakers in the playoffs against the Denver Nuggets after they lost to them in five games, I don't think anyone anywhere in their post 
game analysis said to themselves, you know what? I think the Lakers need a player like Bronny to really help take them over the hump. I don't think anyone watching that Lakers Nuggets series would be like, man, if we had a player like, like Bronny James on the roster, he could really be a difference maker. I don't think anyone would think that. I don't think anyone would think that. Which makes me then believe that the Lakers are doing this to basically appease LeBron James. So then it goes back to the to the to the to, to the main question, which is what exactly are the Lakers' goals as an organization? The Lakers seem to be the most discombobulated, confused, rudderless uh organization in the NBA. Who's leading the, who's leading the Lakers? Who is their leader? What direction are they going in? They're firing coaches every two and a half, three years. They're now in a search for another head coach who now seems to be uh, 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 J.J. Redick, a LeBron guy, who they most likely will probably, most likely will hire him. And now a team that's supposed to be retooling to try to make a championship run is now going to bring in Bronny James, who can't really contribute anything to that team in any of any second because he's not going to be a starter. And you're going to now have to list the players that he's going to be starting ahead of coming off the bench. So the question is, why are you bringing him on? It's not like as if they're looking at a prospect the way the Clippers were looking at Terrence Mann, who they developed over the years, who ultimately became a starter. In the case of them drafting Bronny, they're only doing it to make LeBron James happy. In the case of Bronny, I have to go back to some of his comments. Bronny said he wants to carve out his own legacy. He wants to be his own man. He wants to be... Uh, 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 known for what he's doing but then we get the information that he only practiced worked out excuse me for two NBA teams and turned down like I think 10 and the only teams reportedly that he practiced with or, or, or worked uh, that worked him out were the Phoenix Suns and the Lakers I'm confused I am totally confused I thought you want to be your own man why do you why do you want to go play with your dad I, 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 the question I have is is this Bronny James's dream or is he trying to fulfill his father's dream this is the question here is Bronny doing this for himself or is he doing this for his father and the larger question is is LeBron doing this for his son or is he doing this for himself And I don't know the answer because based on these actions, it's quite hard to tell. It's, 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 I don't even know what to think. I really don't. None of my business, not my family, none of my business. We're just talking about it because it pertains to the NBA. You guys let me know what you think about this weird ass story. These are my thoughts. Catch you on the next show. Peace.